Oh, ma'am. <laughs> Could you uh, tell us what you think of surfers? <laughs> They're cold. <laughs> well, where are you? Like, really? Talk to you. What are you? Talk to you. <laughs> this is wild. What are you doing? Is this like for a uh, school or something? A surfing picture. A surfing picture, really? I want to learn how to surf. I'm from Ohio. Well, how was it the first time you ever saw waves? It was like I came, we came over the hill from to Malibu Beach, and we got there, and it was like, you see this huge white foamy surf coming at you, and you just, your heart just like stops, and you just, you really get excited inside. I can't explain. I've never experienced anything like it before. So I think my, uh, everybody should surf. Roger, uh, well, in this country, why, why not surf them? I believe everybody has his own particular hang-up. We each follow it. Some guys become politicians, some become surfers. Hi, Jacob. Why? What do you like about it? Everything. Uh, I just started surfing, and it's just a feeling out there, you know? It's super, really. You know, you can't describe it or anything. You just speed and everything, and just flowing out there, really, just doing your thing. I think it's the, uh, uh, the feeling of, of being with nature, being out in the water. I like it really when the waves are good and it's not really crowded. And like they're really fast hollow waves. And it's just the feeling of you know, accomplishment. A, a really heavy stone, you know, from the adrenaline, you know, especially when you make it out, you know. 
you're really happy, you know, you have a big smile on your face. You're completely free, the pressures are gone. You know? And also, you, your mind can't be, you know, thinking like in steps that you use in school. It's got to flow, to flow with a wave. So if it stops flowing, then you start getting jerky and you usually end up swimming in. But serving to me is just freedom. Tube is like probably the heaviest thing there is on Earth, or as heavy as anything else on Earth. It's like it's the deepest moving piece of nature there is. And you can get more into it than you can in any other part of nature. I dig it, you know, I can't stand the city or anything like that because you're at the beach, there's so much to do and yet it's so free, you know, and everyone just digs what they're doing. Surfing's a, it's a far out thing. It's the only way I'd like to, it's the only thing I'd like to do. But my parents know this and so like, if I don't get a good grade on my report card, they won't let me surf until I, until I bring it up. And if I don't get a job, they'll use it against me. I can't surf. If, if I didn't surf, I don't know what they'd do. They wouldn't, they wouldn't have anything to hold against me. The last couple of years, I've been sort of hung up on pintails. Their bite and their hair, wow. As far as like out here in a day like this, you know, it's, it's small and, and I think you need a, a shorter board with, a, with a, maybe a round tail. <laughs> This is Bill Hamilton. Two years ago, he moved to Hawaii to get out of the California rat race. He makes his living within surfing, shaping and endorsing surfboards, and writing occasional articles for magazines. He's a pro, and although the living is easy, the pay isn't exactly great. He has an arrangement with a surfboard manufacturer, which requires him to come to California occasionally to shape some boards and promote the product by surfing and talking to a lot of other surfers. He doesn't particularly dig the California trip, but it helps pay the bills. And you meet some interesting folks along the way. Oh, this guy got lunch so bad. I heard you and Jock had a really good uh, trip over to Maui. Excellent trip. We started out North Shore, Oahu, and then uh, Picked up a couple of jocks harmonicas and started jamming all the way down the airport. Jammed all the way through the plane ride. Jammed when we got on Maui. We finally came in some good waves at Windmill.
happened to them, but they become barbaristic. Barbaristic, I'm not sure if that's the term, but I think we're having a nervous breakdown in this country. I don't want to spell it out for you, but it, it is uh, difficult to live in uh, this surrounding. A middle class, mediocre uh, beach and wave. Beginning of each year, uh, we have to close certain portions of the beach to the surfers, which they've had all winter. Uh, one of the problems being that, uh, you know, you're changing known for an unknown. We give them over a mile and a half, almost two miles of beach that they can go to. Uh, this week, uh, for example, we had two days. That we told them to get out of the water. They, uh, you know, they flip us the ball and say, that's it. And so we had to bust three of them each day, and then we got down on the beach, and we talked to many of them and told them, it's your beach. The responsible kids, they see it, no problem. I'm just trying to stay one step ahead of uh, the man's progress here, you know, the plastic business here on the beach. I'd give it another three or four years the way, the way it's going now. And then where? Well, there's about a thousand islands out in the Pacific. Take your choice. No, evolution, where is it all going? Was it coming to an end or is it just beginning? That was one, uh, one fellow who uh, rode Malibu quite well at a certain time in history, and I doubt if uh, very few people are able to find these type of conditions again due to crowds and uh, uh, controls and much bureaucracy. But there are other areas which are magnificent and are treasures of this world. And for someone with a venture and uh, a little uh, excitement in their life, and, and they have a lot of excitement and adventure, and they can find these, this way of uh, living. I've got to do 
Now a word on reality from your neighborhood surfboard dealer, Chuck Dent. If I take a guy, a guy comes down, and he gets good enough, he can ride a Chuck Dent surfboard. I give him a free board. Okay, he goes from there, maybe I'll give him a job. He gets really good, I'll even go to the point of feather bedding, making a job when it's not necessary. He can make money, he can work his own hours. He can surf in the morning, lay on the beach, he can work at night. Uh, he makes, he's paid by piecework. He shapes a surfboard, he gets what, $12, $15 a board, does it an hour, that's a lot of money for a guy that can lay around the beach, man, talk to the chicks, things like that. Uh, you can't compare surfing or a surfing contest. You can't compare it in a business way or anything. It's an entirely different trip altogether. Corky Carroll, former U.S. champ, tells how the surfer's view toward competition is changing. I've won the U.S. title three times, and uh, the surfing pole. Besides the ego trip, which, you know, which is involved in any type of winning something, because winning anything is an ego trip. It's a financial game. Right now, they're uh, just sort of looking back sort of past memories. And in the future, the way things are going, they're probably not going to mean anything. That's good.
This is Big Surf in Tempe, Arizona, where man and machine have combined to produce the first genuine artificial surfable wave. A set of gates open and close at the base of the wall, and water surges out of huge storage tanks. But you can't always count on the wave, and the first question the Arizona surfers ask is, how's the machine feeling today? Conditions are already getting crowded, they have hours for boards and hours for what they call free surfing. There's always a great feeling you get about it. As soon as you, you hit the dirt road or, or you're going through the weeds, there's uh, no people. Each good wave that passes, I, I, I'm sorry I hadn't been out already because yeah, there'd never be another one that's good. You know, I mean, there's only one wave that's, that's like that.
It might be similar to flying. You know, there's vibrations coming up through your feet. It's not a feeling that's in your head, it's your whole body. It's as if you have all the things you've learned in surfing, all the tricks and turns at your disposal, but your mind isn't on any of them. You're thinking of way above that, and it's almost going back to the roots, you might say. Children have a hard time when their mother is gone. People say a sister will do. She'll get married, turn about. 
Jock Sutherland is a very heavy surfer in any size surf. Positioning himself in the power is what he does best. Here's Jeff Hackman, combining the best of all styles. He works the whole wave as he carves his creative tracks. The key to the whole revolution in surfing has been the surfboard and surfers who can take the boards to new areas on the wave. A rider like Jock Sutherland can stuff a board into radical wave positions and find out what works. Surfboard design is a whole trip in itself and Jock is totally involved. Wow. The major, probably the, the major uh, uh, artistically expanding aspect of that um, the whole surfboard was the four ounce glass which kept it about nine pounds, if not less. It had a really steep beam on it, so it could exercise a maximum amount of roll on the lip, you know, really, really free. There are different levels of involvement in the surfboard business. It's a handcrafted item, and most of the craftsmen are surfers, like shaper Harold Iggy. I work about six, seven months pretty hard, and about six, seven months I get to surf out of the year. A whole lot. And the boss, Dewey Weber. I started surfing when I was eight years old, and uh, here I am. Dale Belsey, the hawk, tells how he ran his surf shop in the old days. Very loose. A dollar was a dollar, and a wave was a wave. Enjoyed myself. But I'm working on a board right now that can handle four or five different waves under different conditions, hollow, mushy, whatever. There's no such thing as a perfect board, everybody. Any, any manufacturer that's, that's, that advertises that has got to be sick. I mean, there's just no such thing. You know? I told you to be a thing, didn't you, Bill? <laughs> <That's fun going. laughs> The minute I take a picture of a board and say, this is our answer for the summer, it's ridiculous because they're already changing it. We can't be personal on every board, you know? A guy can't put soul on every board. It's ridiculous. We got to make money. You know, as heavy as like Hamilton is, what he rides, there's still, uh, just can't, not everybody's going to jump on it right away. You know, you have to be programmed and groomed and uh, led into it easy. Man, they got to watch him ride it. I got to rap to him. Randy has to rap to him. And, uh... It's a, a combined effort if you're going to push things. It's like almost now what it's come to is, is a Madison Avenue uh, advertising program. Just for instance, this is Mr. Pipe. Now, we've 
coined that name for him now because uh, for advertising purposes also because he lives right there you know either side of it left's right uh, rocky point billy's got the juice right now his backyard. backyard is literally it i go out every morning and watch that place <clears throat> there's some mornings when that outside reef is coming down 20 feet and reforming inside 15 feet and then when that thing hits that reef you know well, if you can imagine a wave that is so round that you could fit a truck inside it and it still wouldn't get wet, you got a hell of a wave. There are a lot of approaches to surfing pipeline, but Jock Sutherland seems to have the most realistic. You know, potentially you can get killed, get your head split open on a bar, get a rail on the mouth. I mean, if you've got a situation under control, you'd say, well, wow, these waves are going to crunch me, you know, but I can dig it. I'd rather go and get way back in the tubes and hope then that you can have a good time in a dangerous situation. Winter would bring you down forever, but you rode upon a steamer to the violence of the sun. Run laughing through your fingers And you want to take her with you To the hard land of the winter Fishes run laughing through your fingers, and you want to take her with you to.
to the heartland of the winter. Thank you. 
Jack Sutherland likes the bay and rides as aggressively as anyone. After breaking his board, Jock borrowed a red rocket and switched his stance. As soon as you take off on any big wave, you've got this uh, amount of adrenaline surging into your system. It's just flowing all the way through your hands and your, and your feet and your entire being, just so you can focus your pressures on what's happening in the wave. My perception of speed and time, it, it just seemed were temporarily arrested. And all that was happening was that the wave was doing all the movement. And I was the only static thing. You know. But coming into this tube, smooth and fast, clean, hissing feeling entering in the back door. Everything went quiet. I could feel nothing. Inevitably, it always happens when you're, you're not prepared for it, and it's always an accident. It's, uh, it seems to be that's the way you learn on the ski. It's kind of a trial and error thing. You sit on it like you would in a kayak. The only difference with a kayak is you're holding on with your knees, but on the ski, you're strapped on. The object of the 360 is not to do it out on the shoulder or anything where you're safe. It brings you into a kind of a controlled stall. It, it does slow the board slightly.
In Merv Larson's helmet are stereo earphones, picking up music from a tape transmitter on shore. Larson is the only surfer in the world to successfully execute a forward Eskimo roll. Meet Rick Griffin, driver of motor skill and interpreter for the group.
This is the ranch, 20 miles of virgin coastline near Point Conception. The waves are fantastic, but the ranch was recently sold, and it won't be long before they put in the housing tracks, shopping centers, marinas, and no surfing regulations. The surfers were Brad McCall, Mike Tabling, and Angie Reno.
difference between big waves and little waves, uh, it's two different things completely. I think, to me anyway, small waves are more like an art form, something you get close to, something that's fun, something I think of on a, on a nice hot day uh, with some friends that uh, you go down to the beach and you enjoy yourself and you get some good waves and it's a good feeling. But it's, it's just different than big waves.
Now let's join Bill Hamilton and Steve Bigler for a good earth lunch. Got Brussels sprouts, bacon bits, a tuna fish, avocado, cucumber, tomato, red leaf lettuce. It has half orange with it. Lay it on. Lay it on the sandwich. Sandwich and smoothie. Carrot smoothie. Carrot smoothie. What kind of? Two carrots. Two carrots. It's already gone down, it's dark, and uh, there's a big set coming in. There's got to be ten waves, and every wave is bigger than the last. And then you get locked in, and you can't lose your board, because it'll go out in the rib. I remember when I first went to the islands, and I looked at a big wave, and, you know, I thought to myself, do I have the guts to do that, or don't I? Do? <laughs> All kinds of things up here, Ed. <laughs> That's right, you got to live with it. And now, you get to the point where it's really a lot of fun, you know? Really? You know, we had a, a spell a couple of weeks ago that was so bad, you know. No surf, rainy, hot. Uh, and you get so tight inside, you know. It's just, uh, it's like you're addicted to that ocean. 